Good evening, guys. How you guys doing? Uh, I am going over the TriHackMe Junior Penetration Testing Path. <clears throat> uh, that is on TriHackMe. Uh, so today I'm going to go over subdomain enumeration. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Make sure you start the machine right here. Click on Start Machine. And once your machine has started, you will get the IP address. Let's go ahead and copy it in our clipboard. So going, going through this uh, task, obviously, I'm not going to go and uh, read it word to word. So, you know, make sure you pause the video or take your own time and go over that. Uh, so the first thing is just briefing what is subdomain enumeration. That's just the process of finding any uh, valid subdomains of, uh, for a domain or a website. Uh, we do this because we want to expand our attack surface uh, to try and discover more potential uh, points of uh, vulnerability. So there's like a couple of ways of uh, subdomain enumeration. Uh, some of them are brute forcing, OSINT, that is open source intelligence, uh, using publicly available uh, information. And the third one is virtual host. So what is a subdomain enumeration method beginning with B? That would be brute force. What is a subdomain enumeration method with starting with O, which is OSINT? And a subdomain enumeration method beginning with V, that would be virtual host. Uh, so what is the OSINT? Uh, OSINT, or open source intelligence, uh, using the SSL TLS certificate. Uh, SSL, secure socket layer, and the TLS, uh, transport layer security. Um, it locks uh, every SSL certificate created for a domain name. Purpose of the certificate transparency logs is to stop malicious and accidentally made certificates uh, being uh, from being used. So, for instance, we can check some of these well, either this website right here or this one to check um, on the. Uh, certificates for the SSL and TLS. Uh, let's go ahead and click on this one, actually. And, and go to cert.sh and search for the domain trackme.com and find the entry that was logged on 2020, December 26th. So let's go ahead and click trackme.com. And we're looking for the date, which is... December 26 of 2020. So somewhere around, somewhere around 26, somewhere right here. So it's either storetrackme.com. Uh, yeah, should be storetrackme.com. Or, yeah, only storetrackme.com is the only thing that came up. So I'm hoping it will be store, well, I misspelled that store tryhackme.com uh, boom just like that we can go to on this website and find any uh, domains and you know search that up and find if they have any subdomains and when it was registered and all that they even we have blog tryhackme.com um, assets tryhackme.com so you can like uh, you know go through that and see if you can find anything, we can try to go this way. You see, when we go to a blog, it will get us the blogs that has been posted on TriHackMe. So it's a good resource. And then OSINT search engines. Um, this right here, they just basically using like Google Doc, uh, I think it's called Google Hacking, uh, where you go on Google and search the terms uh, tax site and then the you know the name of the website, and you put the uh, site that you want, and this asterisk right here will find anything that has dot trackme.com within the trackme.com site. So we can go ahead and search that on our Google, and the only two things that uh, we found is blog uh, which is still on trackme.com. Uh, so 
that's kind of a way to um, minimize your search uh, results. And DNS, brute force, brute force uh, domain name system, enumeration of the met method of trying tests, uh, or thousands or millions different possible subdomain from predefined list of commonly used subdomains. Let's go ahead and view the site. They already have um, the automated, um, well, DNS, the tool ready for us. So all we got to do is just run it. And it would probably give us API. And this is the only subdomain we found from the ACME IT support that THM. That's just a, a just an example. So it is the first subdomain found with the DNS, uh, DNS recon tool. That is the API. Let me just copy it. Um, and just make sure you go through this. Uh, it's just, it's kind of good. We are done with this one. So, well, the last, not not the last one, task four. To speed up the process of all sense of domain discovery, we can automate the above method using sublist. I don't think I have that, um, but yeah, if you download sublist, so you can probably find Find it right here, and yeah, you can get the sublet. Uh, you can uh, actually download it here. Do I have sublet? I'm not. I don't think it would be too much going through this. Um, right, let me make a directory called. What is? It? I forgot the name of this. What room are we doing? Oh, man. We doing subdomain enumeration. So subdomain. And we can get clone that. What, did I, what the hell did I do? I did not move sub. Domain to no move sub list to subdomain. And then we can go to my subdomain and go to sub list. And we do have our uh, sub list three for pi. And what do they want us to do? Uh, we can run this, run the sub list uh, command. And boom, just like that. What is the first subdomain discovered by sub list uh, tool? That is the web 55 ICME support. We can go ahead and paste that. And boom, just like that, our answer is correct. So make sure when you do your so um when you do your sub list uh, tool, you can definitely just play around with it because it might not work. Or sometimes that's gonna take a while and stuff. So you just never know. We can try it with tryacme.com. Oh, oh, it's actually working. You know, I already showed you guys how to download it and stuff. So you can try it for your own self. Or just use TACD and different website that you want to uh, get a, you know, available information on. And then the last one is virtual host. For that one, let's go ahead and kind of go through it. Subdomains. Uh, this one, I would just go... Uh, some subdomains are not always hosted in publicly accessible um, DNS results, such as development versions of, the, of a web application or administration portals. 
So these ones probably are kept in the private DNS server, uh, either hosted in the developer's machine, in the ETC host, or uh, on Windows System 32 um, systems for Windows users. So, so to give the attack, select an attack box where, and then try to follow commands uh, to get the attack. So, uh, for instance, we use the tool Fuff, uh, and then we will use our tag W switch uh, to specify the word list, and then you get the word list. Hopefully, you have the sec list discovery name. Uh, on your computer, or you can always find it or download it on um, from GitHub, GitHub, and then tag edge uh, switches or adds the header, and the fuzz f u z z uh, is is just a keyword in the space where the subdomain normally go, and then instead of like the fuzz, we will just be using random names from the name list uh, inside this fuzz, and then I will just try it out. So let's go ahead and try this one. Hopefully. Um, let's go and click on that. Um, we can control C out of that because we have a lot of status with uh, 200. The size is 2395. Uh, so because the above command will always produce a valid result, we need to filter the output. So we have so many, um, uh, you know, like uh, status 200 uh, results. We want to uh, filter that out. We will filter, filter it out by using the size. We don't need a lot of 20, 2395 and see what would be the difference. So we can go ahead and change this and paste it here. And for the size, 23.95 was what we don't want. So let's hope we don't find 23.95. Mm, to the start the same way, let's go. Wow, it's badly, yeah, it did. So hopefully we get a few results here. It's probably going to take, I don't know, a few more seconds. Come on. What else are they saying? What is the first subdomain discovered? What is the second subdomain discovered? So I kind of want to understand how this works, though, for the virtual host. So some subdomains... Uh, are not always hosted in publicly accessible DNS results, such as the development OK, because web servers can host multiple websites from one server. When a website is requested from a client, the server knows which website the client wants from the host header. OK. We can utilize this host header by making changes to it and monitoring the response to see if we have discovered any website. So that's kind of pretty much we kind of using like brute force too, because we're going through every possible name list uh, to find any new uh, subdomains, from my understanding. Do we have anything? I'm going to have to, uh, okay, we have API. So yeah, I finally finished um, going through the list. Man, it took almost 12, 13 minutes. Yeah, so the first uh, few well, of subdomains we found is the API. Obviously, we already used that earlier, so it's not going to be that one. So the second one we found is Delta, and the third, well, the first one is Delta, and the second one is Yellow. So let's go back to our uh, try hack me. And what is the first subdomain, which is Delta? And what's the second subdomain? That is Yellow. And boom, just like that, we are done with the subdomain enumeration. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one all next.